my name is Sarah Allred. I'm the horticulture coordinator here at Ashton Gardens at Thanksgiving Point. It's hard to describe. I would say we've got over 50 acres of gardens. We plant over 280,000 tulips every year. And in, in addition to that, we also have over 300,000 other bulbs. So like daffodils and hyacinth and fritillaria, and then all the blooming and flowering trees and shrubs. So there is a lot of things to see and a lot of ground to cover. So every year it's different, but this year I would say there's over 166 different varieties of tulips. And you can kind of see that right here in front of me and behind me. Here in the fragrance garden, we try to plant a little sampling of every single tulip that we plant in the garden. That is a mean question. <laughs> um, I don't. Every year I have a different one. I finally decided this year that tulips are my favorite flower. In the past, everyone's always asked me that and I could never give an answer. It's like picking your favorite kid. But tulips, as you can see again, there's so much variety. So I don't have a favorite, but I have some favorites. So what's really interesting about tulips is they come from Turkey. Most people think they come from Holland, but they originate from Turkey and kind of those um, arid landscapes like Utah. So uh, tulips do really well here, except that we water our beds and we water our lawn. And that's why you'll see people pull those tulip bulbs out and store them in a dry, cool place in the winter and then plant them again. But if we just didn't water them, they'd be really, really happy here. Another fun fact about the Make tulips sure is that we actually pull up all of our tulips every year. So a lot of people leave them in the ground. We pull up over 280,000 tulip bulbs every year. We sell them after Memorial Day, so you can come and pick some and take them home and have some of the Tulip Festival at your own house. And then we have to plan them all again in the fall. The pullout is about three, three to four weeks of pulling everything out. And same thing again in the fall. We pull out, we start planting for about four weeks. We get a lot of community support, so we have a lot of volunteers, our own garden volunteers, and then a lot of corporate help that helps us come and, and plant tulips. So we're really excited this year for people to be able to come and see the Thanksgiving Point Tulip. We introduced it last year, but because of COVID, not a lot of people got to see it. So it was our 25th anniversary, and we had the opportunity to name a tulip after Thanksgiving Point. So we worked with our grower, Rukrock, in the Netherlands, and they are the ones who are growing this tulip for us. And now it's on the International Register of Tulips. And the process for that is there's growers that are always growing and hybridizing and trying to create the next best tulip. One of our growers had a few that were at that point where they could be um, named. And so we worked with them and we picked the one we thought horticulturally we liked the best and then also talked with a lot of the people here at Thanksgiving Point and picked a beautiful yellow lily flowering tulip. So it has these beautiful pointed um, petals, which is why we chose it, because of Thanksgiving Point. Um, but it's also really fun because it has a slight scent. A lot of tulips don't really smell at all, but it has a sweet scent. It's best in the morning. Uh, you can't always smell it, but it's kind of a fun surprise and we are really excited to have a Thanksgiving Point tulip. So right now we're in the fragrance garden. This is one of my favorite places in the garden because it's always changing. And every year we try and do a different display besides just the tulips. When you come back later in the summer, we'll have a different kind of theme going on. This year we're doing Shakespeare in the garden. So you can learn the language of flowers through Shakespeare. And we'll have different quotes from his works when he mentions flowers. And there'll be some beautiful signage. Um, it's also part of our Secret Garden Book Club where we're reading a book about Shakespeare this year. Uh, every year we try and do something different. So last year we had a whole book series that we were highlighting a few years ago. We did Plants That Changed the World. And so it's a fun place to come and check things out. It's great because it's a raised bed so you can get up close and personal with the plants. We encourage you to smell things and touch things in, in this, these beds instead of our other beds. So after the tulip festival, what happens? We pull out all these tulip bulbs and a lot of these other plants throughout the garden and then we replace them with our summer annuals. And so as you come to the garden throughout the rest of the season, you'll see all sorts of different things. And the gardens are changing all the time. I would recommend coming every week if possible, but especially every season, because you'll see the Tulip Festival in the spring. Um, in June and October, the Rose Garden is spectacular. A lot of people don't know that the roses are gorgeous again in October. I love the Italian Garden and during Tulip Festival because we have some interesting tulips always growing there. And then the Secret Garden is always a favorite place. I've read the book in there with my children and it's just kind of a magical spot. But it's also beautiful again in the fall when the trees really put on their show and it's fun to kind of end the season with those beautiful trees. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit more about Ashton Gardens and the Tulip Festival.